Hey, good morning and welcome back to the Air Warfare Group, guys. This is Juice. So this video is for all the people that commented on the video I did yesterday or last night. And a couple of people, or maybe actually probably just one, one didn't know what program I was using to bring up the frame rate and system information counter. And actually, it's not a program. It's within DCS World. So we're going to go through how to turn that on and look at that today. Uh, and then another person commented how to save the seat height adjustment. Now, if it still works like it used to in the past, it was saved with your saved cockpit angle. So we're going to test that today. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and gone into my FAA 18. I've reset it back to the default FOV. And then I can verify that by hitting the right control and pause break twice. Hit it one time, brings up the FPS counter, and then you, you can hit this little arrow right beside it to expand the FPS counter, and you can see where your FPS is in the field, and you'll see if there's a bunch of deviation. So hitting the drop down will expand that, and I'll leave that expanded for you guys. And then hitting right control pause break again brings up this frame right here. And I think I can, nope, I can't change the size of it, but I can move it around. So you can move it where it's best for you. I don't fly with this on all the time. I just do it when I'm trying to set up stuff. Now that command, if you don't have a 101 keyboard with a pause break in a, in a keypad or a number pad on your keyboard, that command in your UI layer under controls, and I'll bring up a little slide here to show you this. It's under frame rate counter slash or hyphen service info. And again, that's a double command. So you hit right control, pause, break once to turn it on. Then you hit it again to turn on the service and you hit it one more time to turn it off. So it goes through, it's a toggle. So I'll leave that on. And you can remember from yesterday that my default Hornet FOV was 109.2. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and dial in where I was. I was think, I was thinking 70 was good for me. I'm going to take it in all the way to 70. There's 70.0. 70 then I'm going to hit the right control and the right shift. And I'm going to hit the angle on the number pad, the backslash, I guess you can call it that. I'm going to bring that out to right about where my infinity or my alpha, my alpha indicator there. It looks like a little infinity symbol almost. I'm going to bring that right at the edge of the HUD frame there. And then I'm going to hit the tap back until I get my mirrors just in the frame. Now, if you look at Sunrise Mountain straight ahead of me and everything, this, I have been to Nellis, I have been to this part of the ramp, and I have seen Sunrise Mountain from there. And it doesn't look realistic, but that's about where the distance I want it to be. That's about what I want it to look at. If we go back outside, you can see that those images are almost a match. The position of view and the height of the camera is different. Now on the seat height, you'll notice that my HUD is a little low. I'm cutting off some of the information at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and hold down the right control and shift, and I'm going to hit the up arrow on the number pad, not the up arrow on the four, uh, three, four way arrows that's you know below your home and page up, page down. I'm going to go over to the right arrow, which is number eight on the numpad. pad. I'm just going to tap that up to where I get it where I want it. So I'm going to put the, the horizon line right about where the angle glass comes together. Let's go like this. And we'll go down. Now to go down, it's the two button. So you can, uh, two button, two key on the number pad. So you're going to hold down right shift, right control, go down. Right about there is where I'm going to leave it. So then once I have that set and I've got the information looking like I want, I'm going to make sure that I'm centered. And if you look at the center point right here. I'll see if you guys can see my mouse during this video. I don't know if you can, but look at the camera that's facing forward. It's that little round thing that looks like it's pointing forward like a barrel. That's a camera that focuses on your HUD. The HUD information is projected by a lens that's underneath of there. You can barely see the arch in the lens beyond it, below the 15 degree down line. And so when I look at this, I can see that on the, the veins that are up there, there's five veins on the front of the nose of the aircraft to help direct the uh, gas for the for the gun when you're shooting the gun. Those veins right there, I can see that it's slightly off. So I'm gonna hold down the control and shift on the right side. I'm gonna hit the four number, number four on the number pad. I'm just gonna tap that. Actually, I'm gonna go number six and I'm gonna line those up so they're centered. So now I'm looking straight on at the HUD. I've got good information. It's lined up with the camera, that, that center fin 
that's down on the nose is lined up with the camera. Now I'm going to hit right alt and zero on the number pad and that's going to be to save cockpit angles. So if you don't have a number pad you'll have to go in and program something to your save cockpit angles. So I'm going to hit that, save it, everything's where it's at, take a screen capture, and now let's go ahead and restart the game. So I'm going to hit exit quick to desktop, I'll play the Jeopardy theme or I'll just fast forward this video. Now in yesterday's video, I recommended that you use an instant action mission and I demonstrated it, that I did it with a uh, instant action cold start, but I recommend you do an instant action ready on the ramp or ready for takeoff because it gives you powered on status to see the HUD information or the HMD information for the helicopters like your Apache uh, or your HMD in your, Vi in your Viper, your Hornet, you know, other aircraft with the HMD. And so let's go ahead and go instant action. I'm going back to Nevada. You can use any map you own. If you've got a ready on the ramp, I would recommend that because then you're going to be state, uh, in a stasis situation where you're not rolling wrong. If you do that, you're going to be static on the runway and you're not, or the taxiway or the parking apron, and you're going to be able to do this without rolling around. You'll also want to do this with your head tracking turned off. All right. Let's bring up those numbers. All right, it saved it at 87.3. My field of view, my height looks good. It saved the seat position height and everything. So it works as advertised. The only thing that's really kind of broken with this right now, we're trying to get ED to either determine if that's the new way to do it now or if it's just a glitch where it's supposed to save it after you set it in game, even if you go flying afterwards. So remember, set this setting in game and then exit and then go to the next aircraft and set where you want that to be. Another question answered from the comments is not every, every aircraft has the same FOV when you get it set up. And the reason for that is your distance to the outside world is almost always the same as what you should try to set. Like if you have a certain look at a mountain or a certain look at a hangar or another aircraft that's parked in front of you, you'll want to make that so it doesn't look like it's really far out from you. And then you can do that. And then you can back out that cockpit angles and stuff so you can see the amount of mirrors you want. Now, for you guys that don't use any head tracking at all and you, you don't have VR, you'll want to give yourself a little side peripheral vision in this view right here. because You're going to be using a hat switch or you're just going to be keeping nose forward and your situational awareness is going to be crap. However, if you're using head tracking, and I'll bring that up real quick. So now check that out. The wing looks about the right distance from my head. Those hangars look about the right size. They're not those mountains behind it off there in the northwest or they look a, li a little bit northish. Remember, the runway is 03, so that's north right about there. But look at those hangars. They look about the right size. Those aircraft on the flight line there look about the right size. Downtown Las, La Las Vegas looks about the right size. My wingman looks about the right size away. Sunrise Mountain looks about the right size. So give this a try, guys. Put a comment if you need some extra help, and we'll see you in the next video.